Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Savvy Cast. This is Jamie, and I'm so glad that you're here. Whether you're listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube, thank you for joining me. Today is going to be a fun episode, and I hope a very useful episode for those of you who want to learn how to master a bunt cake. And guys, I think I have, of all the things I've done, I think I've mastered making a fabulous cake easy. I have a doctored cake mix formula that I use on many flavors of cake mix, and it turns out great 99% of the time. Now, the reason I say 99% is I've made this enough that I've had fails, but I can tell you what they are, how to avoid them, and how to feel confident that anytime you need a dessert, whether you're going to a party or having a party, or there's someone you're, you want to take a meal, or you just want to take someone a cake, you will be able to whip this up or make it ahead of time in advance and gift someone the gift of cake or present them cake at your home in a way that is not stressful, that, but that's easy and it turns out great. 99% of the time. So I'm going to hit all the bases today. I'm going to tell you what you shop for, the ingredients you need to make any doctored cake mix. So we're going to talk about the ingredients. We're going to talk about the process and the formula for doctoring the cake mix. And then we're going to talk about finishing them, how um, I glaze them or put a ganache. We also talk about the add-ins I do add-ins on a few of these, not all of them. So we're just going to cover all of that. And then I'm going to really hone in on how to make these ahead. Most of my cakes, I make days or weeks ahead. I freeze them. And then a day or two before I plan to serve them or give them away, I pull them out and finish them. And guys, it takes all the stress. Cooking does not have to be stressful. Making a beautiful cake does not have to be stressful. So I'm going to share all the tips and the tricks with you. So let's dive in. Okay, let's go shopping. I use Duncan Hines. That is my favorite, but I do think Pillsbury makes a good one. It's just whatever you choose, but I've always used Pil um, Duncan Hines, except I do think on the blog that I do have a picture of my ingredients and there's one where I'm using Pillsbury. I can't remember and it turned out great. First, before we start, because you might be driving or busy and you're just listening. So don't worry, anything I mention, any of the tips, any of the links, they'll all be in the show notes. I also wanna show you, and I do this myself, if you want to find any or all of my doctored cake mixes, it is super simple. Just pull up your phone, hit Google. I always just stand there and hit the little microphone and I will say family savvy bunt cake. Or sometimes I'll say family savvy cake, but I usually just say bunt cake. And it will pull up almost every recipe all on one page. You can see, oh, here's the strawberry. Here's the lemon. Here's the white one with buttercream frosting. Here's the chocolate. So that's the easiest way to find any of my things. Just Google it. But we're going to start with the chocolate because guys, when I tell you that's my favorite, it usually gets has the biggest wow factor because y'all chocolate, that, that's self-explanatory. When you are shopping, you're always going to get two boxes. You're going to get your box cake mix, whatever flavor, and you're going to, and it's usually on the same aisle, you're going to get a box of pudding. So don't get one box and forget the other, or you're going to have to go back to the store. So get your box of cake mix and get your box of pudding. When I do my chocolate, I get a chocolate pudding. It's the smaller size pudding. It is 3.9 ounces. It's not the big box of pudding. It can be instant or the kind that you cook because you're just using the dry mix. I don't get the sugar-free, so get your pudding, pudding mix, and your cake mix. If you get what I call a light cake mix, like lemon, confetti, strawberry, I recommend getting a vanilla pudding 
or a cheesecake. Cheesecake is my favorite pudding to add to the lemon and the strawberry and the lighter cakes. I can't find cheesecake everywhere. Typically Walmart has it, but I just think it's got a really rich flavor, but vanilla is also good. You want something that's light and whiter because you don't want to put a chocolate cake mix in like a lemon cake. So we've got that. We've got the cake mix and the pudding mix. These are dry ingredients. There's one more dry ingredient and it's sugar and it's a half a cup. So those are our dry ingredients. So the wet ingredients for my doctored cake mix formula are three fourths a cup of oil. And I just use a, a high oleic pressed, um, goodness, it's, it's an oil where it's expeller pressed. And even though it's not olive oil or avocado, it's not the healthiest, it's the healthiest of that oil you can get. I think I use Olay, it's got oleic acid, but anyway, if not, just use canola, Wesson, whatever, just oil. Don't use olive oil. I know olive oil is healthier, but it's going to interfere. It's just too fruity, it's too heavy. So we've got our oil and our water. We're gonna have four eggs. It's always going to um, be better if you let your eggs get to room temp. So those are our wet ingredients. We also have sour cream, a cup. I do not use fat-free sour cream. I use reduced fat or full fat. Okay, here's the process. It could not be easier. Get out your bowl. And you literally can do this in one bowl. If you choose the easy path, which I've done this and it works, put everything, cake mix, pudding, sugar, water, oil, everything but the sour cream. You're going to fold that in once you've mixed all the other. Mix everything with a hand mixer. No KitchenAid stand mixer needed. Mix it all up. You're going to need to have a spatula and you're going to need to scrape the sides and the bottom halfway through your mixing process because inevitably you're going to have some cake mix that is on the bottom of your bowl and you need to get it up with a spatula where it will mix in with the mixer. The mixer blades are not gonna get that off the bottom. So give it one good scraping on the sides and on the bottom, mix for about a minute and a half to two minutes total. And that's it. Other than you want to, once it's mixed, then get your cup of sour cream and you're gonna fold that in and stir it in really well. I've actually giving it like a 10 second mix in. You want to blend it until you don't see that it's sour cream. It's just all blended in. It's going to turn your batter. It's going to make it have a lighter appearance, but it still turns out great. It adds so much moisture. It's just a great way to have a cake that you don't have to worry about it being dry. So that is the basic formula that I apply to all of my cake mixes. Now, with the chocolate, you can add chocolate chips. I do, unless I'm out, I always do. I like to add about a half to a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. The two that I love, I like the Enjoy Life or the Ghirardelli, and I do the dark for the enjoy life because those are, or the semi-sweet, both of those are really good. Or I do the Gir Girardelli semi-sweet. I like to find the smaller chips for the add-in, but either is good. Girardelli is my go-to. It's just got the best flavor and it just takes the inside of the cake to a new level. You're going to also use those same chips, or you can get a bar form of Girardelli semi-sweet you can get it in bars or chips but you're going to make use that to make ganache but if you choose to put a ganache on this cake which again that takes it over the top the ganache is simply those the semi-sweet chocolate plus heavy cream and I'm probably going to have to do a whole podcast on glazing or topping a bundt cake because there are a lot of little details that I'm not going to go in today but those that's the that's the extra ingredient that I would add if you're making the chocolate version of this. I would grab a pack of Girardelli semi-sweet chocolate chips when you buy these and that will make the cake super great. Now, 
I am going to talk about the, while I'm on the flavors, I'm going to talk about the lemon, the lemon recipe that I have on Family Savvy. I make it according to the formula that I just gave you, but I like to add poppy seeds to the batter because I grew up going to pot, church potlucks, picnics, and there was always a lemon poppy seed cake or two on the table. That's just a fond memory for me. And I think they add just interest. They add a little pop of little speckled interest. And they also, you can tell that there are little poppy seeds in there. So those are a fun thing to add. And I also add, I believe, but you can check because I have a recipe for all these. I think I add some almond extract to the lemon and I don't add extract to all of them, but I think I do for that one. The way I finish the lemon is I put a fresh lemon glaze and a gla my glazes are basically confectioner sugar with some form of liquid. And for this one, it's confectioner sugar and fresh lemon juice. Get it to the right consistency and glaze the cake with that. And you've got such great lemon flavor. And I totally forgot when you pick up your lemon cake mix, you're going to pick up a box of pudding. If you can find lemon, get lemon. If not, get vanilla. Cheesecake also works well. So any of those work beautifully with lemon. I love to serve this cake with fresh strawberries and freshly whipped cream. It is absolutely delicious. And y'all could not be easier, could not be easier. Okay, now here is another one. And this is great for Valentine's. I've already, I've already made my strawberry bunt cake. It's in the freezer. And I'm gonna share my bunt pans with you all. I brought them up. I brought them all up except my Valentine's one. But anyway, this is the strawberry cake mix and I make a strawberry bunt cake with this according to the formula. I don't do any add-ins with this but the glaze I use is the lemon glaze because I love the way the the fresh lemon juice on top offsets the sweet because the strawberry is sweet. You could make a normal glaze with confectioner sugar and milk or buttermilk or water, but I just use the lemon glaze on this. So the pudding I use for the strawberry cake mix, um, I use the cheesecake if I have it or the vanilla, either works. So you've got your box of cake mix and you've got your box of pudding. And y'all look at this. I found this heart-shaped bunt I believe it was Home Goods the other day. You're going to start seeing these heart shaped bunt pans in the Home Goods stores because it's in January and they're getting ready for Valentine's Day. Y'all, and this is, I believe this is a Nordic Wear. Nordic Wear is the bunt brand. That's the brand, just like Lodge's cast iron. Nordic Wear is bunt. You can probably find other brands, but that's the best. This cake turned out beautifully. So it is in the freezer, but I am going to decorate this. I don't know how I may put strawberries along the edge. I may put something in the middle, but see if you can find one of these for Valentine's. And that's just a nice little twist to have the heart shape. And I'll show you the other bunt pans that I have toward the end. Here is another super fun, super delicious bunt cake that I make. Okay. This is rainbow confetti. I think if you get a Pillsbury mix, I think they have the, the brand Funfetti. I think Funfetti is, is their patented term. This is rainbow confetti. Either way, it's sprinkles. And guys, who doesn't love sprinkles? I don't know anyone who doesn't love sprinkles. So get your box of Funfetti or um, rainbow confetti cake mix which it's already going to have some of those in there. Get one of your lighter puddings, cheesecake or vanilla. And you don't have to do this, but to me, if a few sprinkles are good, more sprinkles are better. I like to add about a half a cup of additional sprinkles. 
And these are the ones for my YouTube viewers. I'm going to hold this up. You can see this is just the Walmart brand, but they're everywhere. You can see they're like the long skinny ones. They're not like the little dots that you can barely see that if you spill, if you spill them, they go in a million directions. These are like maybe a fourth of an inch long. They're like little pellets. So these are the ones I like. I think they they don't bleed as much and they're just more, they're prettier inside of a cake. You don't have to add them. I just think it adds color and a little crunch, just like poppy seeds. So I glaze this cake with just a traditional glaze, the confectioner sugar with sometimes I do milk or buttermilk, or water. You could do the lemon glaze on this. That would be great, but I usually just do this sweeter. Okay, I'm going to show you. This is a fall cake that I just made this year. I had never done this one before. Made it for our small group peeps, and I had one of the guys, they're, we're, they're married couples. One of our young guys, he came up and he hugged my neck, and he said, that is the best cake. It's the best cake. And anyway, he loved it. So I do have to tell you, this one was a hit. It is the perfectly moist carrot cake. And this Duncan Hines, it said it's made with farm grown carrots. And I do not have my readers. Let me see. Okay, here are my readers. Let me see. Oh, guys. Okay, well, the first ingredient is sugar. We're not going to worry about that. We're talking cake today, guys. We're talking special occasion, holiday whatever. Okay. The first ingredient is sugar. The second ingredient bleached wheat flour. The third is dehydrated carrots. So there are carrots in here. They're dehydrated, but they're there. But my recipe is on the blog. You can use one of your lighter ones, cheesecake or vanilla. I added some fill-ins or some add-ins to this cake. I think I did a half a cup of canned pineapple in its own juice. I did not add any sweetener. Uh, I didn't have any that was in syrup. And then I think I grated some carrot, real carrots. And I think I did a half a cup and I grated them with my box grater. Now the pineapple, you're going to want to squeeze all the juice out. Do not add anything to any of these cakes, whether you add strawberries or pineapple Anything that has liquid, you want to squeeze it out because if you add something with liquid, the cake will probably fall. It'll probably sink. So this turned out great. Now, I glazed this with a buttermilk glaze and y'all, it was so yummy. And the buttermilk glaze has confectioner sugar, buttermilk. It does have a little melted butter and I think it may have some um, extract. This is one that I just created this fall, so I can't remember off the top of my head, but you can Google family savvy carrot cake and it'll pull up with the recipe. So those are some of my favorite. A huge hit this year, I did a red velvet version. And I think if you go on my Instagram, there is a, um, there's a live where you can watch me making the whole thing. And it turned out beautifully. And I did a thicker glaze and it was sort of a rough process. I thought, Ooh, this is going to turn out horribly, but it turned out to be beautiful. And then I put cran sugared cranberries that I had made a few days earlier, put them around it. And on the pedestal, it was a showstopper. And I had so many followers um, on Instagram and Facebook who messaged me and sent pictures and said, this was a hit. My family loved it. So guys, that is a great one, especially for the holidays when you want a beautiful, stunning cake that's a centerpiece. And it's also great for Valentine's Day. Mine for Valentine's is this strawberry. I think anything pink or red makes a great Valentine's Day or Christmas cake. I'm going to show you my other pans. I've shown you the heart. And I did leave another one downstairs, but this is my newest one. This is the Nordic Wear Brilliant. And it's got evenly spaced, I don't even know, slices or whatever. I don't know, y'all. I don't know what to call this. It looks like sort of like a starburst. This is what I did my red velvet cake out of. And y'all, it is stunning on a cake plate. 
My other one that I've used for years is the Nordic party bunt and it's like this in that all the pieces are equal sizes but they're rounded it's just like a rounded and you can slice every piece equal so that i i just have a lot of bunts but i did not bring that one up here are two that are their nordic wear original bunt okay these are six cup so they're like miniature and when i use these I pour three cups of batter in each and I have two miniature bunts. This is good if you are taking a bunt cake to someone single or just maybe a married couple where there's just the two of them. And this would be a nice cake that they could enjoy and not have to throw any away. Or if you've got two people and you just want to give them a little something, say two teachers or two friends, you've got these two six cups. I will link to all of these. Let me see if this, oh, I think it has on the bottom of all of these, how many cups. So on this one, Nordic Wear USA. Okay. Oh, okay. This even tells you this is the Bunt Brilliance. This one is called the Brilliance, B-R-I-L-L-I-A-N-C-E, and it's 10 cup. Okay. The Nordic Wear Party Bunt that I have, I believe that's 10 cup. I believe 10 cup is the standard bunt cake, bunt cake size. I think there is a 12 cup, but most of them are 10. Okay. My heart bunt cake pan is Nordic Wear 10 cups. So 10 cups is standard and your batter is going to go to the top, almost to the top. It won't overflow and you will be fine. It's not going to overflow. So those are my pans. I've shared my add-ins. I've talked some about my glazes. All details are going to be on each recipe. I'm just going to quickly hit some of the most common questions I get about these cakes and hopefully this will help. The most common question I get is how long do you bake this cake or that cake? Want any of these bunt cakes. Guys, I'm just going to tell you every oven is different. It's calibrated differently. It is very, very difficult to say this is how long it takes. So this is what I tell people. Most of these cakes take, I'm going to say, I think I put it, I think I put it in here approximately 40 minutes. But what I tell everyone is start watching your cake through your oven door. Do not open the door. That is a mistake, especially if you open the door too soon, the cake is going to fall. Do not open the door of the oven until you think it might be done. Because number one, it will fall if it's too early. Number two, the temp is going to drop and the oven is going to take time to heat up again. Every time you open the oven door, the temperature drops and the oven has to climb back to temp. So please don't open the oven door unless it's toward the end and you think it might be ready. What I do is I look at the surface of the cake. If the cake is possibly ready, it's going to look firm on the top. You're going to start seeing little cracks and you're going to start seeing it pulling away from the edges. When you see that, and you're also typically going to smell the cake, it smells like it's done. When I see that, and I see it'll start pulling away from this inner tube that makes it a bunt, this inside tube. When I see that, I get two pot holders, and I quickly open the door, and I jiggle the pan very gently. And if the cake doesn't move, it is done. If it doesn't jiggle at all, pull it out. If it barely jiggles, I mean, ever so slightly, you can typically pull it out and it's going to finish baking, uh, finish setting and not be undone or raw in the middle. But if it's got a substantial jiggle, it is not done, shut the door. And because you've had the door open, you're probably going to wait 10 more minutes before you check it again. But that's the key is looking at it rather than just relying on your timer. The second question, how do I keep the cake from breaking when I turn the pan over? Baker's Joy or flour cooking spray. Baker's Joy is my go-to. It's, I think, the original that has flour in the spray. Pam has a version, but it has to have the flour. It's like you're greasing and flouring, but with the spray. And guys. 
when I say spray liberally, I'm not joking. I spray every square inch of the pan. And you also want to spray on the inside and get all around this inner tube. Any part of this pan that the cake batter will touch, it needs to be coated in that spray. So just go generous on the spray. That is the first tip for an, a cake that will not stick. The second tip is do not turn the cake over until you have waited until it's cool. I try to wait at least 30 or 45 minutes, preferably an hour, because a cool cake has settled and it's firmed up. The reason a cake breaks or crumbles is because it's it's hot or warm and it's still moist. You know how the difference in a moist cake and one that's at room temp, the moist one, you can just glide a fork through and it just melts almost and the other's firmer. So Number one, make sure you spray your pan. Number two, let it cool in the pan before you turn it out. Here's my third tip. And I'm going to stand up because I'm for my YouTube peeps. I've got to show you all this. The third tip for turning out your cake from the pan without breaking it is this handy dandy must have for me cake spatula. Okay. This is a Nordic wear. I'll link to it. Bigger. It's probably 11 in inches. It, it's bigger than the cake, the bottom of the cake. So this is how you do it. You're going to take your cake. Let's say your cake is sitting on the counter and you've had it sitting out. You're going to lay this Nordic wear spatula on top of the cake. Then you're going to turn it gently with your hands just like that. And then you're just going to wait a minute. Just let it settle for like 30 seconds to a minute, then you're going to just gently lift y'all don't jerk it. I know it's tempting because I've done it before. Gently sort of wiggle the cake pan, lift it up. And there you have it, a beautiful cake that's not broken. Just patience and time and spraying that pan and you will not break your cake. Y'all, there's nothing worse than going to all the trouble and it smells great and you get too excited and you turn it out too soon and it falls apart. Trust me, I've done it many times. Okay, so that spatula is a fabulous tool to have. Okay, I'm gonna end with the make ahead tips. When I make these cakes ahead, I typically make them ahead and stick them in the freezer because my schedule is pretty predictable. When small group session starts every week, we, we're feeding our sweet couples and I know that I'm going to need a dessert. So I just start freezing cakes and I will make the cake, bake it, and then I'll cool it. And then I flash freeze it. And I get this question all the time. How do you flash freeze? Guys, think of flash freezing as... You're freezing it without any, you just stick it on a baking sheet or a cookie sheet that will fit into your freezer. Just put your cake, you don't cover it. You just put it in there, just stick it on. And you can even stick it in your freezer on this cake spatula. If you've got room, stick it in the freezer uncovered for a couple of hours or until it, it gets hard. And the flash freezing is just hardening it up, getting it just to the point of that it's so cold that it's not going to crumble or tear when you slide it into the gallon Ziploc or the two gallon Ziploc. It's flash freezing. So the texture will easily slide without compromising the aesthetics of the cake. Typically two hours is what you're going to need the minimum. Honestly, I typically I typically forget about it, not intentionally, but I forget that I put my cake in. And then the next day I'll go to the freezer to get something out and I'll see the cake and I'm like, Ooh, there's my cake. And then I'll get it and I'll go ahead and put it in the two gallon Ziploc or the gallon Ziploc, whichever it fits. And then I get the air out as best I can. And I label it, always label your cakes. You think you'll remember when you met, when you made it or what flavor, if you're like I am, you think you will, but you don't. And you want to label the date that you put it in the freezer. 
because then when you pull it out, if it's six weeks later and you'll say, Ooh, I froze this cake six weeks ago, we need to go ahead and serve this. We need to go ahead and eat this. Um, so label it with the date that you froze it and go ahead and put, I'll usually put like chocolate bunt or, you know, strawberry bunt and you've got it in the freezer. So flash freeze for minimum of two overnight's fine. Then put it in a freezer Ziploc, the appropriate size and label it. Now, when you're ready to serve it, let's say you've got it in the freezer and you're going to serve it to your people in three weeks. So this is how I do it. If I'm serving it three weeks later, it's going to come out of the freezer. I typically do it the day before and because I freeze mine without the glaze or the ganache, you can freeze it with the glaze and the ganache, but I don't want to get all that trouble. And I think it glazes and ganaches better when it's been frozen, when it's cold, because your glaze doesn't seep all into the warm cake and just sort of disappear. It will sit a little bit on top and you can see it. The ganache sits on top a little better, but I will take it out the day before. And then I'll glaze it or put the ganache and then I'll just stick it in the laundry room high where Tucker can't get it. And I might just cover it with a towel. I just recently bought a bunt cake keeper. So put it in that. You do not have to refrigerate it. You can, but you don't have to. The next day you serve it. And guys, it's wonderful to know that dessert is done. Literally, you're, you're done. It's done. All you have to do is take it out and glaze it. You can take it out right before and not glaze it or put ganache and people will love it. Just serve it with some fruit. It is whatever you want it to be. It can be as simple and it will still be delicious or you can gild the lily like I tend to do because that's just me and you can add a glaze, add some garnish. Finally, let me just tell you, buy a beautiful cake pedestal. Guys, buy it once and it's bought and you'll have it forever. A cake can be a centerpiece, a focal point of your table if you have a beautiful cake plate. Annie Glass is next level. If you want to splurge, Annie Glass is beautiful. But I do think their cake plate, though, is a bigger size. These bunt cakes, I want to say they're 10 inches. I don't, I like to find a cake stand or a cake plate that is almost the same size with just a little room to go. I don't like to put it on a cake plate that's way bigger. If you do, to make it look right, you're going to need to put something on the outside to fill in all that space. But I have several that are marble. I've got some that are glass with gold rims. So many options. And it's just something that makes such a difference. Put one of these bunt cakes on a cake stand. Put some candles in it. You've got a beautiful birthday cake. And I do want to end, I did not mention my white cake. I've got to mention it because y'all, it really is the bell of the ball other than the chocolate. The, if you Google family savvy white cake, it says the best white cake with buttercream frosting. That cake uses the white cake mix and the formula. And the only additional tweak or addition is almond extract. You use almond extract in both the cake mix before you bake it and you add almond extract to the buttercream. And I typically make that one as a layer cake. I use six inch layers, which are thinner and taller. It makes a stunning cake. And because I can't decorate worth a pea doodle, I make it a naked cake and y'all a naked cake is just wonderful for people who can't really decorate well because you're basically just wiping frosting around until you know you wipe off a lot of it and you can see the cake through it. It's so wonderful. That is one of the best cakes ever and it tastes like you got it from a bakery and it literally has been used for weddings. I've had a handful of people say, we used that cake for the wedding and it was wonderful. I took it, I make it almost every Easter and I, because I can't decorate, but I can do a cross. I've had someone before at an Easter dinner that we had ask if that were a wedding cake. So check that one out too. And you would use the, again, with the white cake, you would use one of the lighter cake mixes 
Guys, I hope that this was helpful. If I did not answer a question you might have had, or if you have any other questions, please reach out, email me, jamie at familysavvy.com. Follow me on Instagram at family underscore savvy. And I hope you'll continue watching and listening to the Savvy Cast. I just appreciate you all so much and hope I've added value. And until our next episode, Thank you again, and you have a fabulous and blessed rest of your day.